Now we're going to take a look at the new platform, the interactive children's books here. And you see you have the option of read it by myself or read to me. We're going to do the read to me. So it's sort of like com combining the voice track from an audible book with something visual here. And it waits for you to swipe the page. Long ago, elephants had no trunks. They had only blackish, bulgy noses, as big as boots. Their noses were suitable for sniffing and for wriggling signs. So I like that it waits for you to swipe the page, because sometimes, you know, it is kids just want to look at the pictures forever first. If you tap down here, you can also pan through all the pages in case there's a page you just want to go back to. Now we're going to take a look at actually reading a book. Let's just pick up the stand. So here we have it's very nice, very readable and crisp text. And if you want to swipe a page to turn the page, you can do that. You can also just tap right here. And you can make bookmarks up here. And if you want to see text-based controls for reading the book. Just tap in the middle of options here. You can get the table of contents over here. You can search in the book. You can change the text size and you can change the brightness without going back, without having to go back to the main screen. So right now you can see we're actually on the smallest text size and it's very readable. You can change your font and you can go with publisher defaults, yes or no. Change your line spacing and you can change the background. So yes, there is a night mode. You have normal, you have night, you have gray, you have butter, you have mocha, you have sepia. I'll just show you the night mode. For those of you who want to read in bed without annoying your partner. Now taking a, taking a look at the font list over here, you can see you have a choice between several fonts, serif and sans serif fonts. Now we'll take a look at PDFs. That is one place where this really shines over an eating based product. So here we are on a user guide for notebook computer. This is a PDF. And you can see you have more options. You take a look at the about. You can see that this is actually Quick Office's PDF reader. If you've used an Android smartphone, you might be familiar with that. And oddly, swiping goes up and down instead of side to side here. This is a few hundred pages, and you can see the speed is quite good. One thing that is annoying, though, is the page content links are not live links to tap on. You can go to page, you can fit to page, you can fit with. You can get properties for the document, and of course you can read it in landscape mode as well. And then obviously you'd want to choose fit to with because nobody's going to read it like that. Aha! Much more readable now. If you want to zoom in and out, it's very responsive for that too. So here we have a page that's got a big image on it. No problem zooming around. So if you read a lot of PDFs, this is really a great option. Likewise, if you read manga comic books. Here we have Extras. These are applications that Barnes & Noble preloads, and some of them are standard Android applications. Others are theirs. You can integrate your contacts with Google Contacts. This actually has social networking for sharing what you're reading and for sharing portions of books. And you can share that on Facebook and Twitter. We've got Pandora Streaming Radio here. Awesome choice. Sudoku, of course. And we'll take a look at the music player. And if I had album art, it would display album art, but I do not. And that can run in the background while you're reading. In fact, here's a return to what I'm reading function, so you can just hop back into your book. Now we'll take a look at the video player. So th though this isn't a full Android tablet, it is a good crossover device. Uh, for example, if you're looking at something for your, your teenagers so they can access the web, they can access Facebook, play music, and watch some videos, and do reading. This is obviously quite a good choice for those kinds of activities. Now we're going to take a look at Gallery, which is a standard Android application. Not the quickest to load thumbnails here in Gallery for some reason, but so we've got our photos on here, we've got a lot of these came with it, we've got some videos that we put on here, we're just going to pick 
video right now. I found that using video that was encoded primarily for the iPhone and smartphones works fine. If you use MPEG-4 H.264 with AAC stereo audio, it's worked well. You can go up to 720 pixels wide. If you go over that, the player won't be able to play it. So now we'll play one of those videos. Again, this is about 640 by 380 pixels high, I think. Bit rate's pretty high. It's about 1,500 kilobit per second. And if you want to access playback controls, like so. So it's doing a very good job. Honestly, a lot of smartphones with high-res screens can't keep the lip sync going as well as this is doing. So if you're looking for ways to get distracted from your reading, this certainly will help. So that's the video player. One thing that will comment on, the only hardware button here is the Nook button. Some applications do give you a back button. Others don't. And there is no Android back button for those who use to Android. And if somebody does find a way to root this guy and put apps on it, it's going to be a little awkward to use Android applications without the back and menu buttons. As a photo viewer, we'll just take a look at a picture that we put on here. And it has slideshow functions. You can set it as wallpaper and so on. And swipe through the pictures. So pretty cool. And last, we're going to take a look at the web browser, which is the Android WebKit-based web browser. It defaults to going to Barnes and Noble's homepage right here, and you can see the speed's pretty good. Obviously, Wi-Fi does help with that. This is Android 2.1, so we don't have native Flash. This will play mobile YouTube videos, though, and you can use this in landscape mode. And there's the keyboard. We'll just visit our own website so you can see how that renders. And so if you want to zoom in, you have the buttons right here to zoom in and zoom out. There is no pinch zooming here for some reason. Strange, even though the operating system supports it. But then again, don't need it that often. So being an LCD-based de device, this doesn't have the battery life of an e-ink display that only uses power when it's turning a page. So this is good for about eight hours of actual usage time. That doesn't mean eight hours through the day it's going to drop dead. It means eight hours of you using the product. And so far we're finding that on target. It's actually pretty good for an LCD-based device. It's similar to the Galaxy Tab. And part of the reason it's so heavy is because it does have a large battery in there. And if you want to get to quick settings, by the way, right down here, you can do orientation control, adjust your brightness, mute it, and turn your Wi-Fi on and off. It's a feature, too, and you can get more granular battery information by going into settings. So that's the Barnes & Noble Nook Color, a surprisingly wonderful LCD-based ebook reader. For those of you who read indoors and need backlighting, and just want to do more with your e-reader, like browse the web, play some videos, look at photos, stream some music, it's a great choice. If you're looking for something that's just for reading novels and that works outdoors, e-ink is probably still a better choice for you, as in the traditional first-gen e-ink nook, a Kindle, a Sony reader, what have you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and visit our website for the full review.